Dr. Decker, what is a tectonic fault line and why is it important if there is one under Poch or not? Well, there are two reasons why tectonic fault lines or geological fault lines are important for such installations. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one, it could be a so-called active fault line that moves episodically uh, and by moving episodically such fault line would create earthquakes and an earthquake, and the ground shaking of an earthquake would be a threat or a hazard that applies to the plant at the site of course. This is one issue. The other issue is if the earthquake is strong enough it has uh, the possibility to, to break the surface. So the ground surface, which is now pretty flat, and, and buildings and roads and whatever are on this surface, would be broken by the movement of the fault. Uh, there are examples from active faults around the world where such movements make steps into a previously flat landscape of up to half meter height meter height, whatever, or shear the earth's surface, and this would destroy all uh, man-made structures that are situated on top of this very fault line, of course. And uh, what kind of research needs to be done to exclude the presence of such a fault line in in vicinity of uh, nuclear power plants? Well, there is a, a whole series of geological and geophysical investigations that needs to be done to to exclude the presence of such fault lines uh, it's not very easy to exclude them because of course such severe earthquakes such strong earthquakes are rare and uh, we don't have records in our history uh, that such earthquakes occurred but this is not because there are no such earthquakes possible in an area this is rather because our history looks back for a couple of hundred years. So we have written records for, I don't know how Hungary is, but in Austria, prior to the year 1200, you don't find any records about earthquakes in a written way. Yeah. So, and typically these very strong earthquakes occur once in a thousand years, every 2000 years, whatever. Yeah. So we were simply lucky in the last hundred years in Austria not to mm -hmm. see something like that. And you in Hungary probably as well. Yeah, and uh, do you think that uh, you reviewed uh, this kind of uh, research, what <coughs> was done in Paksh before the further building of the power plants. So what is your opinion on this res research? What, uh, what did you find out when you looked at uh, this research? Well, we looked at, at the research results which were provided by the Hungarian geological and, 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 and uh, seismological and geophysical scientific community. Mm -hmm. This is summarized in a very thick voluminous report called the site uh, geological site report it has a couple of thousand pages i think and by looking at that we learned that there were thorough investigations around the site to identify these fault lines they were identified with uh, geophysical methods with geological methods and uh, there is according to our interpret interpretation, convincing evidence in these documents that Parksh, the existing Parksh, and the future Parksh 2 site is mm. sitting on an active fault line. This is also one of the conclusions of these documents. The Dunashint Gurgi Harta fault zone. Yes. Was it correct, more yes. or less? <laughs> Thank you. Ah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is below, this yeah. is a fault zone which is about one kilometer wide and it extends below the existing power plant and into the site where Park 2 should be constructed. Uh, when this was made public uh, a few years ago that, the, the, that this fault line runs right be, uh, below the power plant, the scientists, the authors of this study claim that indeed there is a fault line but it's not capable. What is, cap what is a capable <coughs> fault line and why do they think this fault line is not capable? Well, first, a capable fault line <coughs> or capable fault is capable to 
disrupt the surface. This is what I explain. In mm -hmm. addition to the earthquake shaking, you have a step or a shearing of the Earth's surface. Mm -hmm. This is referred to as a capable fault. And as we have read the geological reports, they don't exclude a, a capable fault, but uh, there are parts of the report which uh, have shown the results of excavations at the site. So an excavation, people were digging a, I think, 80 meter long trench, mm -hmm. ex excavated the youngest sediments that were on the place, sediments of the Danube, with an age of 19, 20,000 years, and the clearly documented faults that reach up into these very young sediments. And we have, uh, they provide evidence with the pictures, with the profiles, with the geological mm -hmm. descriptions, that these are actually faults that ruptured the surface 19, 20,000 years ago. So I think that the Hungarian scientists were aware of this. They but did not use the, the word capable fault as far as I remember yeah, from the report. Yeah, but still when I interviewed Horvat or Thor, they said that this fort is not able to move the ground. No, yeah, it was able to move the ground 19, 20,000 years ago and it's uh, very difficult to assume that there is a geological switch that the fault now is turned off and it would never move again and could not move the uh, ground surface in the next whatever. Uh, so how, how come they still uh, uh, classify this uh, site uh, suitable for nuclear power plant? Well, uh, as far as we learned from the Hungarian legislation and the, the regulations of nuclear safety, it is necessary uh, that the possibility of a permanent ground displacement, this is a capable fault, needs to be excluded by scientific evidence for the site. So this is a requirement that the site can be considered as the site for a nuclear installation. And there are two points in our report. First of all, we say that, okay, there were thorough and deep-reaching geological, geophysical investigations, but Detailed data from the one kilometer wide fault zone are only available from a trench which is 80 meters long. So there is no adequate investigation of the youngest sediments at the place where the power plant itself should be constructed. The trench was next to the existing power plant. So we say, or we think at least, at to the knowledge that we have in the moment, that the investigations cannot reliably exclude the existence of a capable fault at the site of Park 2, which is a Hungarian legal requirement for the siting of the power plant. The second is, on the contrary, the data from the trench that is documented in, in the geological site report, in our understanding, proves the existence of a capable fault at least in this trench. And is this data correctly represented in the site um, uh, safety report? Well, the geological site report has an enormous number of authors from the geological and, and geophysical scientific community. As I said, it is, <laughs> you can weight yeah. it in kilos. And yeah. this has been condensed into a site safety report by MVM Park 2 which has, I'm not uh, sure, but something like 300 pages. And this site safety report has then been uh, provided to the, the nuclear authority in Hungary to apply for the site license. Now, as far as we could compare these documents as non-native speakers, so we had mm -hmm. to rely on translations, of course, yeah. we found very remarkable differences between these documents. Uh, we found that a whole volume of uh, the geological report which was delivered to the future licensee was omitted from the documentation that went to the nuclear authority. This volume contains paleoseismological evidence of ground-breaking faults, surface-breaking faults further north of the plant. This does not appear at all in the report uh, that Park, MVM Parks uh, delivered. 
we found diagrams like the map of the width of the fault zone at the site or below the site which which differ from one report to the other report so do you think they downplay the probability of this uh, fault in the safety report or consciously I, this this i cannot claim but uh, we we have pointed out very clearly the differences that we found and all these differences are directed to give uh, the impression of less hazard at the site this is what I would say. But I have to add that this needs to be clarified in discussion with the Hungarian colleagues and particularly with the in the discussion with the uh, Hungarian nuclear regulator. Mm -hmm. Because so far we do not know if the site license is exclusively based on the report delivered by MVM Park mm -hmm. or if the nuclear regulatory body also considered the geological report, which is this several thousand pages and document. Can you talk to them? So do they uh, do they tell you the nuclear authority how they Well this is not my point. I'm a uh, mm -hmm. I'm just a geologist and, and, and uh, doing the yeah. technical stuff. But there is a an agreement, a bilateral agreement between the Republic of Austria and, and, and Hungary to discuss uh, matters of nuclear safety on a bilateral level mm -hmm. regularly every year and as far as I know the Austrian uh, body which is responsible for this dialogue submitted a request to Hungary that this issue needs to be discussed in a technical discussion with mm -hmm. the Hungarian regulator. And is, is this a purely legal matter or, or do you think there is real chance of an actual earthquake at Bosch? No, you're, um, as a ge asking me as a geologist yes. there is a real hazard of an earthquake as pa at Paksh. Um, this would be my geological uh, reply. Uh, when we read through the geological report we found distributed all through these thousand pages or more than thousand pages evidence for, I don't recall the actual number, but 20-30 earthquakes, severe earthquakes, which all are documented to have occurred in the near region around Paksh in the last 30,000 years. This is a very high earthquake density, speaking in, 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 in terms of geology. Uh, yeah. And there is no reason to assume that this earthquake uh, activity stopped from then to now. Thank you.